Hi, I'm Andrew, the Customer Support Specialist from Acumi Connections, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to learn about using the Deja Vu Z11 credit card terminal. So once you get your terminal, it will come pre-programmed, and I'm going to show you everything that comes inside the box. First and foremost, the terminal itself. Your power cord will come in two sections. The first is a power brick. This connects to the nine volts uh, port at the back of the terminal. I'll show you that in just a moment. And this is the power cord. It also comes with a four foot Cat5 ethernet cable. It's completely optional. This terminal is Wi-Fi, so you don't need to use it if you don't want to. And we also include a few rolls of two and a quarter thermal paper. And I'll show you how to install that in just a moment as well. So before we hook the terminal up, I'm going to show you guys how to use all of the ports on the back and what goes where. So most importantly, the 9 volt port right here is where the power brick plugs in. This is what powers your terminal on. There are two USB ports. These are for plugging in the optional uh, Deja Vu Z6 pin pad if you'd like to have that. This is your phone line. This is the only port if you wanted to hook it up to your phone line that would work. You cannot use this one or that one. Your COM1 and your COM2 ports are for your 9-pin serial over Ethernet connections. These are basically obsolete. They won't be used very much. And the most important one, if you wanted to hook your terminal through an Ethernet connection, that port is actually down here. So you have to plug it in and thread it like that way if you wanted to connect it to an ethernet cord. All right, now that I've shown you how all the ports work and which goes where, we're gonna hook up the Deja Vu terminal to the power. First, we're going to take the power brick, unwind the cord, and this will plug in to the nine volt section right there. You'll hear a small click when it goes all the way in. The power cable. You want to make sure you line up the sections correctly and it plugs all the way in. And then you will plug the plug into your port. Your terminal will activate. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Once you've got your terminal connected and powered on, you're good to start taking transactions right away. At Acumen, we program all of the settings that you request into your terminal before we ship it to you. So the moment you get it, you can start taking transactions. First thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is connect your terminal to your network of choice. This connects via ethernet, phone line, or Wi-Fi. And this time we're gonna set it up with Wi-Fi. So in order to connect to your Wi-Fi network, you're gonna press the top of the touch screen to bring up your connection menu. And then if you weren't connected, you can select Wi-Fi and it's gonna bring up your list of networks. Select the one that you want and you press connect. And bam, you're all good to start. Okay, so before we start anything else, First, we're gonna show you how to insert the paper roll into your Deja Vu terminal. So in order to activate it, you just pick it up. You'll fit your finger right underneath the lip right here and lift up and you'll hear a click. And it's gonna open up just fine. You're gonna put your paper roll in underneath so that it comes out just like that. And close it until you hear a click again. And then you can press the feed button and it's gonna print out. So we've got the paper hooked up, the terminal connected to the network. So I'm gonna give you a brief rundown of all the buttons here. Unlike the Ingenico, this is a lot simpler just because this terminal mostly functions with a touch screen. So you just have your one through nine keypad. This right here is your power button and your feed button. If you wanted to feed, you just press it a little bit. If you wanted to reset your terminal, you would press and hold for a few seconds and would restart. 
So that's how you reset the deja vu. You no longer have to unplug and plug your equipment like some sort of caveman monster from the 1950s. All right, so the first setting that we're going to change on your deja vu is we're going to alter the manager password. Uh, with Acumen, the password is defaulted. If you're using a different processor, that might vary. So you would always want to call your processor beforehand to make sure. So in order to change your default password, we're going to press the three bars on the bottom of the screen to bring up your menu. We're going to click Utility. And it's going to ask for the manager password. Press enter. And you're going to go to security and edit password. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to enter our current password and it's going to ask for a new one. So I'm going to change it to one, two, three, four. And it's going to ask you to confirm two, three, four, press enter. And the new password is going to flash on the screen for a few moments. And it's very important that you write that down. To keep it remembered somewhere. Something that you would easily remember for all of time. Because it's very difficult to reset that password if you don't know it. Okay, now that we've got the password changed, let's take a look at some of the other settings. So just like before, you're going to press the three bars to bring up your menu. Utility, it's going to ask for your new manager password, which we just changed to one, two, three, four. And then the very first option, settings. Now, if you've been hearing that annoying keyboard beep, you're not alone in hating it. So the very first thing we're going to do is turn that off. So you're going to select the keyboard and it's going to ask keyboard beep. Do you want it on? Yes, to keep it on. No, to mercifully turn it off. Now, nothing happens. Well, it always does that one. Let's play around with some of the other settings real quick. One, two, three, and four. Settings. This is where you can also adjust your date and time. If you wanted to make your screen on the screen brighter, you can actually adjust that by pressing the display. You can make it as bright or as dark as you like. And if you wanted to change the language, that's the very last option right there. And now, moving forward, we're going to turn on my favorite setting on the Deja Vu Z11, training mode. So in order to activate training mode, hit the three bars to bring up your menu. You're gonna hit utility, type in your manager password, one, two, three, four, and enter. And then that option right here, training mode. But we're going to do something special beforehand. We're going to add it to our favorites menu, which I'll show you in just a moment. So in order to add a setting to favorites, press and hold. And it's going to ask, would you like to add to your favorites? I already have it added, so we're going to move over to that. The second option right here, star. This is where you can add any setting that you use regularly, like settling changing your password or entering training mode. So we're gonna press that. And I've got that set as the second option. And we're gonna press. It's gonna ask for your manager password. And it's gonna ask, do you want to turn training mode on? I'm gonna press yes. It's gonna tell you training mode is on. And it's gonna print out a receipt telling you that training mode has been activated. And you'll always be able to tell whether your terminal is in sales or training mode because with training mode, you'll see on the top of the screen here, a large capital T. And that'll tell you any transactions that you're running right here will not actually be charged. So you can go through the entire process if you're showing a new employee or testing a new security feature. You can go through the entire sale process, including inserting or typing in a card number. It'll accept it, but it will not charge that card. This is a great tool for teaching new employees how to use your credit card machine. All right, so we've played around with the settings. We've turned off that keyboard beep. We've added a password, got the paper in. So I'm gonna show you how to run some basic sales on this terminal. Remember, I've still got this in test mode. You can see by the T on the top of the screen there. So any transactions that we run will not be valid. 
you need to make sure that you turn test mode off when you actually want to use your credit card terminal. And I'll show you how to do that again in just a little while. So in order to run a sale, as you can see, you have two options. Is the card you're running credit or debit? So for this scenario, going back to our old candy bar shop, this customer wants to use a credit card. When you press credit, you're gonna have six options available. Sale, return, void, authorization, ticket, and reversal. And I'll go and show you how to use each of these. So first, we're just gonna do a basic sale. Hit the green sale button. And we're gonna sell another one of our amazing one penny candy bars. So type in the amount, press the green okay. And now it's ready for a customer to either insert the chip of their card right down at the bottom underneath the pin pad. They can swipe it right at the top. It does have contactless pay right here at the very top. Or if you'd like to type in a customer's number, you can just start typing. I'm not gonna type in a real number because I like my credit card too much to share it. Then you would just hit enter. And obviously because this is a fake number, it's gonna decline that card. But with a real card, it would take that money and it would print out a receipt for both the merchant and the customer. Now I imagine some of you are saying to yourself, but Andrew, I take reservations or prepayments for services that I won't give until at least a week later. Is there an option just for me? And the answer is yes, very specific viewer. So if you wanted to run a prepayment or an authorization hold, we can only do that with credit cards. Press the green credit button, and you're gonna press the blue auth again. And it's gonna ask you how much you want the credit authorization for. This customer is ordering two of our incredible one set candy bars, but they're gonna pay a couple days later when they come into the store to pick one up. So two cents, enter, and that it's going to ask for a credit card number or just their car present sale. Sorry, future Andrew, past Andrew here, going to bump in real quick just to give you a little warning about how to run authorization numbers if you are doing a card not present credit card transaction on an authorization hold. There are government regulations that you need to know about before you run one, and essentially you need five pieces of information if you're going to do an authorization hold and type in the customer's credit card number manually. Those five pieces of information are the credit card number itself, the expiration date, the CDV code on the back of the card, the customer's billing zip code, and the customer's billing address. It will ask for all five of those pieces of information, and we cannot disable that. So you need to make sure if you're on a phone call with a customer, do not let them hang up until you've completely finished all of that information and run that authorization code and you have that transaction in your hand. You can type in the number and then once you do, you can press enter and it's going to print out a ticket specifically called an authorization ticket. This authorization ticket is telling you that this is not a charge, this is a hold on the customer's bank for that amount that you had typed in and authorized. On this ticket, it's going to show you the amount. It's going to tell you that it's only an authorization hold and not a charge. And at the very bottom of the receipt, it's going to give you a ticket number, an authorization number. You need to save this receipt or save this number. This is very important for how you'll actually charge the customer's card in a few days time. At max authorization hold that we can do at Acumen Connections is seven days before that hold is lifted. So after you print that ticket, you have exactly seven days, regular days, not business days, to charge that customer with a ticket sale or else the hold will be lifted and you'd have to seek another form of payment from them. So you've got that two cent charge and now the customer's come in and he wants to pick up those two candy bars. So you're gonna press credit, you're gonna swipe over to the red ticket button and press it. And the very first thing it's going to ask you is how much? Two pennies, press enter. It's gonna ask for your manager password. And now it's going to ask for the authorization code that was printed on the bottom of that ticket. You have to type in that code exactly as you see it. And it's going to charge that customer's card for that amount. 
If you do not have that code, you need to simply take payment as a regular sale at the time because it will be lifted in seven days. Uh, characters do not matter because it's only a numerical code. There won't be any letters. Another question we get is, Andrew, I know I'm a retail business, but my business actually thrives on tips. Is there a way that I can still take tips without having to add a restaurant coding or a tip adjustment? And once again, very specific question viewer, that is correct. Hey Andrew, gonna interrupt you once again. Andrew here, just to give your customers a little bit of heads up. This part of the section going forward is specifically for Deja Vu Z11 terminals that are programmed with retail parameters in mind. There's actually a little bit of a difference when it comes to tips versus whether you're restaurant or a retail section. So if you're a restaurant, you can go ahead and disregard this section entirely because you'll have the tip line, the tip adjustment on your terminal pre-programmed into your credit and debit sales section. Back to you, Andrew. And I'm gonna walk you through how to turn both a tip prompt, a tip line, and a pre-sale tip option on your terminals so that you have various different options of taking tips on your sales. So first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is add a tip prompt onto your sales menu. In order to do that, we're gonna go into the menus, press the three buttons. We're gonna hit applications, credit, debit, EBT. I'm gonna hit setup. It's gonna ask for your manager password. One, two, three, four. Okay, enter your password. You're gonna select the option tip. You're going to want to put an inline tip on and it's going to ask you a couple different options. It's default set to off. You can just turn it on. You can set it to percentage. You can set it to only charge tips for credit, debit, and fixed. It does not actually do anything differently. So you can just ignore that option. For our purposes, we're going to hit on. It's going to tell you that tips are on. And then you can press the red X to go back. And now if we run a sale, for another one of our amazing one penny candy bars. It's gonna ask, does the customer wanna add a tip? And he enjoys my candy so much that he's giving me $10. And then it's gonna ask you to confirm one cent plus a $10 tip. Yes, and then it's gonna ask for the customer's card. Once that card is entered, it's gonna print off a receipt showing his tip. So we've got tips added to our sales menu, but let's say you want to be able to present a customer a ticket of their charge, have them add a tip on, and then you can ring their ticket up after that. That's called a pre-sale ticket, and I'm gonna show you how we can activate that. So you're gonna go into your menu with the three bars, applications, credit, debit, EBT, and the option pre-sale ticket is right there. Just like we did for training mode, you can press and hold, and it's going to ask you to add to favorites. I've already got mine set to favorites. So I'm going to press the red X, go to our favorites menu. You can see I have pre-sale ticket it's right there next to underneath training mode. So I'm going to press that. It's going to ask for the manager's password. Okay, so it's going to ask you how much is the total charge. Now this customer ordered just a staggering amount of candy bars. He ordered 100 of them. So we're going to charge him $1. It's going to tell you that this is not a charge, this is a pre-sale ticket only, and it's going to print out a receipt that you can present to your customer. You can see at the top, like every receipt, it tells you it's still in training mode. This looks like a regular receipt, except it tells you pre-sale ticket. It'll show the amount, and then it's going to add a tip line for a customer and a total amount. This customer, again, loves my candy bar so much, and he wants to give me $10 tip for his 100 candy bars. He fills that out and adds the total back and he's gonna hand the ticket back to me. And then you can run this just like a regular sale. So credit, sale. You're gonna type in just the sale amount at first, $1. And it's gonna ask how much in a tip. He gave me $10. It's gonna ask if that's correct. The answer is yes. 
And then when he's given you the ticket, he's probably given you his card. You can run the card and it'll print out a receipt showing his total charge plus his tip added. This is a great service for people like hairdressers, dog groomers, taxi services, food trucks, anywhere that you would want to add a regular restaurant tip line and a receipt that you can give to a customer and then alter the tip after the fact. This is a great option and I assume you'll use it a lot. All right, so I've shown you how to run sales on both credit and debit. And let's say you wanted to void a transaction that you had already run but had not settled your batch yet. That option is available, it's right underneath sale and it's void. It's gonna ask for the transaction number. If you do not remember that, then preload it onto all of these terminals at my request in your favorite section. Scroll down. There's actually an option underneath report called void transaction. And if you press that, you can actually bring up a bigger list of filters, such as every transaction on your current batch. You can search transaction number, reference number, if you've added invoice numbers, if you just want to avoid the very last transaction you've done, or even approval code. And you can search every transaction and void credit and debit this way instead. Let's say you've got a transaction that you've already settled the batch on that, or this was a batch that was settled some time ago and the customer is coming back to you now and he wants a refund. There's an option for that as well. And that is the return function. Return is essentially a reverse sale. It's gonna ask you how much you wanna to return to the credit. We're gonna give him back his one penny for the candy bar because satisfaction matters at Andrew's Candy Emporium. And hit yes. I'm gonna ask if that's correct. And then they're going to insert the credit card, swipe it any way that you'd like. So a very key point on your returns depends on which type of card that you're wanting to return it to. If it's credit card, you can do it any way that you rang it up. You can insert, you can tap, you can swipe, you could even type in the credit card number. There is a special regulation for debit cards that any return that you do onto their card has to be card present. And unfortunately, that means that the customer, if they want their return done onto a debit card, they need to be present in order to insert, swipe, or tap it because you cannot manually enter a debit card number to return funds to it over the phone. All right, so we've gone through everything needed to run this credit card terminal. Before we sign off, we are going to make sure that we turn off test modes. We're gonna go back into our favorites, select training mode, and it's going to ask for your password. Now, it's gonna ask you the same thing. Do you want to turn training mode on? But Andrew, training mode's already on. Yes, so you're going to hit no. And now it's going to tell you training mode is off. And as you can see on the very top bar, that T is gone, which means that car, credit card terminal is raring to go and actually takes sales for Andrew's candy and porn. And that's everything you need to know about the Deja Vu Z11 credit card terminal. If you learned something that you didn't know, you can hit that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out the rest of our videos. You can go to our website and check out some of our blog posts, services that we offer, and you can check out any of our social media in the description below.